What's happening guys? So today I want to talk about the meat that I just had. I want to talk about what's going to be coming up next and just kind of some overall thoughts about everything. So I will start with the meat and I will put a timestamp in the description below that will kind of tell you when I'm going to start talking about what's next, where I'm going from here. If you just want to skip to that, you've already seen my meat, you don't care about my thoughts on it, just skip to that and I will talk about what's next for me because there's big changes coming. But as far as the meat goes, like I just could not be more thrilled with how things went. It just went absolutely perfect. I, I just was blown away with how well things went. I mean, you probably know I had that big goal, 1,300 pounds. I've had a lot of struggles leading up to this meat, both physically and mentally. And to show up at nationals, the biggest stage that I've ever competed at, probably the biggest stage I will ever will compete at, and perform pretty much flawlessly like that just really meant a lot to me like just perseverance you know what i mean perseverance always pays off and it just was a really fantastic feeling and you know starting with squats squats were unbelievable like they i cannot even believe how well they moved that day like it was crazy so we had planned on the final attempt being around 462 chipping up to 468 or 469, whatever it is. I think it's 468 point something. If things felt really good, we would chip up to that. So I hit my second attempt of 440 and it just crushed it and it felt unbelievable. So Jake kind of looked at me, he's like, dude, that looks really well. You want to go up, right? And I go, I seriously just looked at him and I said, put whatever the hell you want on that bar. It is going up today. I don't care what you put on there. So he chipped up. We took the, the 468 and I knew it moved well. Like I knew that it was a good lift and there was no question about it. I did not see the lift until later on that night. Like I never saw it until several hours after the meet. And I could not believe how fast it was. Like it was insanely fast. And it's kind of funny, like I hit the lift and as I'm checking to see if I got white lights, the spotter behind me goes something along the lines of, Dude, that was probably the cleanest squat we've seen all day. Like, he was just like blown away with like how smooth and how clean it was. And it was, like it was so easy. I had a lot in the tank. And you know, I think a lot of people would feel like, well, they'd be bummed, like, well, why didn't I do more? Like, I, I should have done more. I had I had all this in the tank. But that's I, I think that's not necessarily a good way to look at things with the meat. And especially with squats. Like, I'm a big fan of being conservative with squats for a couple of reasons. One, I mean, there's, you look around and people just miss lifts left and right anytime you go to a meet. Like it's just, if you want the best total possible, the best way to get the best total possible is to go nine for nine, right? Like you miss lifts, it destroys your total. But besides that, if even if you say, let's just say for instance, you got the absolute most weight you possibly could on a squat on your third attempt and you grinded the crap out of it and you got it and there was no way you could have done any more, that was your max lift. Well, that's great, but now you've freaking smoked yourself. Now you're just like, you're, you're super tired because you've spent all that energy trying to grind out that squat and you still have to bench and deadlift. So how many times have you seen somebody squat a, a real hard grinder or even missed it on a grinder, which that would be even worse, right? Because now you've smoked yourself and you didn't get the lift. And then they show up to deadlifts and they get to like their second attempt and they can't even move it off the ground because they're so cashed from that squat. So. A conservative squat is not a bad thing. Now, this was pretty dang conservative, but I had a goal in mind. I had a goal in mind of 1,300 pounds. We had it all laid out how I needed to get it, and we were sticking to that plan. So I hit that. It was really easy. It felt really good, plenty in the tank, and we went on to bench. Now, bench historically has been the... The lift that's more difficult for me on meat day, I don't know what it is, but bench just never feels as good for me on meat day. It never has. Not a single meat that I've ever done has bench felt like it did in training. It's always felt worse. I don't know if it's changing equipment. I don't know if it's different um, bench height, maybe. You know, these benches are a lot more cushy the way you kind of fall into the bench. Maybe that has something to do with it. Obviously, there's commands you have to worry about and all these other different things, but the, just the lift itself just never feels as good. It always feels heavier. I, I always feel tireder with my, my chest for some reason. But anyway, the first two lifts went fine. We went on to the third attempt and I had, to, I had to trust my coach on this one. So I had hit 303 and the next one was to be 314. And I didn't like the way 303 felt. Now it moved fine on video, which obviously I can't see during the, during the meet. 
and I didn't like the way it felt, so I was a little concerned that maybe we needed to chip back two and a half kilograms, especially since we had chipped up on squats. I thought, well, okay, if, if we're just playing it safe now and I just chip it back, now we're still on pace and I can still hit my final deadlift and hit my 1300 pound total. But he, he looked at me and said, dude, like that was really fast. It looked really good. So I trusted him. So we went with 314 and it, and it went up. I got it. Now on video, again, it looks pretty clean. It looks like there's more in there. But trust me when I tell you that if we had gone up two and a half kilograms from that 314, I'm about 90% sure I would have missed it. Like there wasn't much more there. That was about as much as I was going to get. You know, the difference between a smoke show and a miss for me on bench can be, it can easily be two and a half kilograms. So maybe we would have got it, but it would have been a grinder like crazy and it would just been really dangerous. So th I thought 314 was the perfect attempt. And um, that actually tied a meat PR for like the fourth time. <laughs> so, so 314 is just the kind of where I've always ended up, but that's okay. So it set me up perfectly. All I needed to do was go three for three on deadlift and I'd have my 1300 pound total. So went out, warmed up, everything was feeling pretty good. Not fantastic, but pretty good. Opener went fine. It didn't feel the best actually. You know, the opener, while it was plenty easy, I just, I personally felt like it, it felt a little bit off. And that's pretty typical for me. For whatever reason, my opener on deadlift is usually the worst feeling attempt on deadlifts. And it was true again this time because my second attempt felt and looked even better. So we went up from, I think it was 474 to the 495 and the 495 felt clean. It felt really good. So at this point, since we had gotten the extra two and a half kilograms on squat, instead of needing a 523 deadlift like we had planned, I only needed a 518 or 517. So that's what we took and as per usual with my deadlift, it comes fast off the floor and slow to lock out. Everyone always looks at my deadlift and thinks that I have a ton in the tank. And again, trust me when I tell you, there was not a lot left on that lift. I think 523 would have been reasonable. Perhaps 528 would have been there. It would have been very difficult and it would have been very risky. Um, and that would have been the max. But 517 was the perfect last attempt. It was clean, it was smooth and there was no doubt that I was gonna get it, but it was still plenty challenging on my end. And, uh, you know, we got it. And like, you guys that have been watching me for a long time know that when I hit a big lift, when something big happens, I usually get like real fired up. Like I scream, yell, and I just go crazy. I just can't hold it back. Like it's just something that I do. But with everything that had gone on, when I hit that final deadlift to get my goal, to get that 1300 pounds, on the biggest stage, I got very emotional. Like I just started tearing up like instantly. Like I didn't even know how to celebrate. I just went and hugged Jake, went into the back and we just started talking and I was trying to fight back tears the best I could. Like I was just so happy, so full of pride and uh, just proud of, proud of myself for sticking through it because I definitely had plenty of times where I wanted to quit and uh, you know, I've talked about it many times about not wanting regrets in my life and I knew that I would regret if I didn't at least try. So even if it hadn't gone this well, like I still would have been okay with doing it because I at least put forth the effort. But to actually come through and actually get it, it was a big, big moment for me and uh, felt really good. So, uh, yeah, like that's at least for now going to be my last meet, at least for quite a while. Now, besides my meet, I also had two clients at nationals, so that was pretty cool. That was my first time actually handling people at a national level, and I had my client Shane and my client Shelby. Shane was actually in the exact same flight with me, and we were really close in many lifts, so there was actually a couple times where I was literally coaching him and then lifting right after there, right after him or vice versa. So it made it a little, a little stressful, but it was okay. Like we, I, I, I managed it just fine, but it was really fun. Um, I just love handling people, man. It's so much fun to handle clients and uh, very, very proud of both of them. Um, you know, some PRs. Shelby ended up going nine for nine, hit, hitting a couple of PRs. Shane did great. We're gonna, we're gonna change some focus on him now and uh, go up a weight class. And I think that'll help because he has a big weight cut that he, that he takes every time. And it's just, I think it's too much on him. So we're gonna go up a weight class and really excited for the future for him. I think that's gonna be a great move for him. But just the whole experience at Nationals was a lot of fun. It was really amazing. It was it was great to, 
to meet a lot of people that I've known just through online, to see a lot of old faces and friends, and to be around that atmosphere is unbelievable. And uh, it just really helped remind me just how much I love this sport. And the, the camaraderie that, that is in powerlifting is just on another level. Like, I don't know of any other sport that has the camaraderie against like opponents, you know what I mean? Like everyone's there supporting each other. Everyone is there wishing people well. It doesn't matter if you are in prime time competing for a top three or if you're just trying to hit all nine lifts and you're at the, the very bottom of the totem pole. Like, I mean, I didn't even know, I didn't really care where I placed. I, I, it just didn't matter to me. All I cared about was my 1300 pound total and I, that was, all I cared about. But when I when I finally looked at somebody, I was like, well, how, how did you place? And I'm like, I don't really know, I don't really care. So I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll just go look and check anyway. I was like 58th out of 67, right? So like like way at the bottom, right? Like not even close, like bottom 15% or whatever. And I don't care. Like that's the beautiful thing about powerlifting. It doesn't matter where you place, man. Like you can do your best for you, you can have fun, and it doesn't freaking matter. Like it. It's just amazing to see people supporting each other, helping each other out all the time, and just really generally, genuinely caring how other people do. People are helping load each other. People are helping people with advice on how to go about things if they have questions. Like It's just an amazing atmosphere, and I love the sport so much. Now, what does that mean for me moving forward? Because, as you know, I've been talking about switching away from powerlifting now and having that be my last meet, at least for a long time, and trying out the physique stage. Well, as, as I kind of thought would happen, you know, I started having some reservations after I went through the process of nationals and was in that experience, in that atmosphere, crushed my meet, had the best meet of my life, absolutely flawless meet for me and think, well, now I'm just gonna stop, like that's gonna be really hard. And while it is, I still want to push forward through with this next phase of my life and try something different. But what it really did solidify for me was the fact that I am 99% sure I will be powerlifting again in the future. It's not really a question of if, it's just when. And it's not gonna be for a long time probably. By the time I do compete again, I'll probably be in masters. I'm 38 years old now. so. It'll probably be a couple of years because I want to spend the next good year, year and a half maybe, literally just focusing on building muscle and trying to put on some size and set myself up for a potential physique show down the road just to try it. I feel like I really need to try it once and just see and go through the experience and see what it's all about, see if it's something that I like and just try it. And even though it terrifies the crap out of me and I feel like I'm way out of my element, way out of my league and that I will fall flat on my face and do horrible, <laughs> I just, I feel like, again, I will regret not trying it. So I feel like I have to do it. And even though it's scary as hell, like if there's one thing that I've learned in life is that whatever the hell scares you, is exactly what you need to do. Like the scarier something is, the more important it is for you to actually do it. I, I can't stress that enough. So for me, I am pushing forward now. I this this next week, this week right now, I'm actually going to be powerlifting just this week. I want to hit this weekend. I want to try to hit some gym PRs. So just for funsies, I took some some light singles on t Tuesday and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm gonna do squat and then bench and then deadlift and just go for gym PRs just for fun. Since I'm already well adapted to strength, and this week is kind of a little a little bit off anyways as I switch coaches, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. I just felt like, well, wh why the hell not? You know, I've got Paul. Paul's camp is coming up this weekend. It's going to be a great atmosphere, it's a good, good environment. A lot of cool people are going to be there, so it's, it'll be a fun time to try and hit some gym PRs. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. That's not a big deal, but hey, if I can do it, great. So speaking of Paul, he is going to be coaching me now. So I, if you didn't know, I have been with Jacob Allen with the Novo for over two years now, since July of 2015. And he is a fantastic coach. And I cannot thank him enough for everything that he's done for me and what he's taught me, not only in the gym, but outside. And, and he's helped me mentally in many ways, as well as physically. And I cannot stress enough that this change in coaching has nothing against Jake. He is fantastic, he is phenomenal, and I have no doubt in my mind that he would be a great coach as I make this transition in my life. However, with that being said, you know, Paul has become a very close friend of mine, and we're together quite a bit. He's locally, 
So I see him all the time. And to be able to have a coach who is in my corner, who is there with me, who I can talk to face to face, train with, just be together is a big deal. Plus it's always good to get a fresh perspective. You know what I mean? Like just to kind of get a different perspective. And, and we all know that Paul's a fantastic coach when it comes to physique sports. So um, I'm very much looking forward to it. I have no doubt he's gonna really help me tremendously. And I just cannot freaking wait to get started. Next week, we're gonna get going. And I just like, I, I'm excited and terrified all at the same time. So yeah, I sent him my opening stuff. I tried to practice <laughs> physique poses for him because he wanted pictures in the physique poses and I'm like, what the hell is that? Like, how do I do that? So I quick went on YouTube and searched it and awkwardly tried to get in front of a camera and take some fo photos and uh, some video and it was just extremely awkward and looks horrible and made me feel extremely small and not in good shape at all. <laughs> but hey, that's okay, we all start somewhere. And uh, I know in the grand scheme of things, I'm actually in a pretty good starting point. So, um, yeah, like, I guess that's all I have for now. I still very much love powerlifting. I still very much will be in the scene. I still want to go to meets. I still want to help coach people. I still will watch plenty of powerlifting YouTube stuff. Like, powerlifting is something that I love, and that is not going to change just because I'm changing the way I'm going to do things right now. Like, I still love the sport a ton so i just wanted to make that very clear and um you know i know some people have been actually like it's been kind of strange like they're almost upset that i'm not going to be powerlifting again which i'm not really sure how to take that <laughs> because like i don't know i think they just they want me to do well which is good but like it's also you know my life and i want to i'm going to do what i want to do you know what i mean but uh you know i get it i get it like People have been watching me do powerlifting for three years now, so it's probably a little weird to get away from it, especially everything that I've gone through, all the ups and downs, and to persevere and um, have the meat of my life and then stop. Like that kind of can, can kind of seem a little weird, but at the same time, it's kind of cool because it's like it's almost like I'm kind of going out on top. You know what I mean? Like not on top in terms of powerlifting, but on top for me. Like what better way to go out than having a perfect meet, hitting your goal, and you know going on to the next thing. But like I said. I'll be back. I'm almost positive I'll be back. Uh, and honestly, I think that this phase of building a bunch of muscle and going through this process will probably help me be a powerlifter in the future too. Like having a lot of extra muscle isn't going to make me weaker. <laughs> you know what I mean? So anyway, I have rambled on it long enough. So if you actually made it this far, bless your soul. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone who has shown me love and support through this process. I have gotten so many kind words. It uh, blows my mind. And uh, Sometimes I feel like I don't deserve it, and uh, I, I just appreciate you guys so much. And uh, I don't know what this transition is going to mean for my channel. We'll just kind of see. I'm going to keep bringing out the informationals, and uh, it just probably will mean less gym stuff. But um, I'm not going anywhere. I'll still be here. So I will talk to you later. Thanks. that you're giving Every minute, every day I've been craving